one of the good things about regular languages is that we can actually decide a lot of their properties. The first problem is actually nothing new. It's testing membership. So we have an automaton defining a regular language and a word and we'd like to know whether the word is in the language or not. And this can of course be done just by simulating the automaton and checking whether there's an accepting run or not. The applications are various. We've already seen how to uh, do it in Java. The uh, matches method of the pattern class, for example, does exactly this. It uses an NFA approach to check whether an input matches a regular expression or not. For example, when checking email addresses or checking whether no special characters are uh, inside a user input. The next problem, testing emptiness, is the problem given an automaton. And the question is, is the language accepted by this automaton empty or not? This problem might seem a bit weird or uh, strange in, uh, at the first glance. However, it's very uh, useful when deciding other problems, which we'll see later on in this video. The algorithm for checking emptiness is actually quite simple. The language of an automaton is empty if and only if there's an accepting run for some word. So we just have to check whether there's a possible path starting in some initial state and ending in one accepting state. And this can, for example, be done by doing a depth first search in the graph of the automaton. Uh, here we have to, of course, mark the, uh, mark the states we already visited to detect cycles. Here in this automaton, for example, the, uh, fine, the accepting state here is reachable from an initial state by just following the path. So the language is apparently not empty. On the other hand here, the uh, accepting state here is not reachable, so we can conclude that the language is empty. There is no possible accepting run leading from an initial state to an accepting state for any word. So the language must be empty. After having found a method to test for emptiness, we can use this method to check for subset, so test the subset condition. We'd like to know whether an automaton a1 defines a language that is a subset of the language of an automaton A2. And this decision procedure is useful, for example, if you would like to check whether an implementation given in terms of an automaton complies with a specification also given in terms of an automaton. The implementation is more, uh, more detailed, more precise, whereas the specification is more abstract, allows more so you would like to know whether every run of the implementation actually complies with the specification. And that's actually a testing subset. Apart from that, it's also useful for deciding other prob uh, problems. The key to this decision procedure is the property that L of A1 is a subset of L of A2. If and only if there's no word that is in accepted by A1 but not accepted by A2. And this can be easily decided using the things we already know by first computing the complement of A2, so accepting all the words that are not accepted by A2, then compute the intersection of this uh, language with the language defined by A1, and then check this language for emptiness. And finally, we can use the procedure for testing subset to turn it into a decision procedure for testing equivalence of two automata. Consider these two automata, they accept the same language. And to determine this, automatically, we can simply check whether the language defined by the first automaton is a subset of the second one and vice versa. And one of the applications is, for example, to compare regular expressions to check whether they actually define the same language.